Hey, welcome to Web Squadron. We're going to be talking about dividers or lines or whatever you want to call them, pipes. Yeah, doing that in Elementor is actually really, really simple. Okay, it's not that difficult to add a line in and position it where you want. However, what if you want to add it in association with some buttons or headers or text where there's some links going off and you want to kind of add in a divider between them? Now, there is a way that you can do this using some CSS code uh, so that when you have your menu, okay, your horizontal menu, you can add a divider in and it will position one after every item in your menu. That's a bit of a, it's not a long winded bit of CSS, but there is some CSS out there. You can easily get that off the internet. I'm not covering that. I'm covering off. What if you've got like um, some buttons that you've put on your screen and you want to add a divider in between? How can we do that? And I've got some various examples here. This is based on a question that came up in the Elemental Community Facebook group. I want to say thanks to Nicholas for nominating me to get this video done. So I, in my lunch break, I'm now doing a very quick little video and I hope it helps you all out. Hey, I'm Imran, Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, follow us so you can keep up to date on so many amazing things to do with Elemental, WordPress to help you, your clients and your business and your cat and your dog and everyone else associated with you. Right, so what we have on the screen is if I just do this, we've actually got five ways of doing a divider. There's probably loads more ways. I'm just going for five of the simplest ways that you can cover this off. Number one, icon list with a horizontal line. Sorry, icon list as a horizontal line. This is basically just your icon list, okay? You can't miss it, okay? It's one of those dead simple ones. Here you go, icon list, right? You drag it in. Once you've dragged it in, you will put in your items. So if you've got seven menu items, you'll have seven items over there, okay? You, you probably will want to get rid of the icon. You can keep the icon, it's up to you, but if you don't want an icon, you just want a divider line, delete the icon away. You go to style, and what you have here is an option called divider. Look, I do that, the divider there at the top has magically disappeared. Or we can reactivate and stick it back in. And once you do that, you then decide on your weight. So if I put in 10, it's going to be very big. I've just gone for one. You can pick your color. You can pick your height. So you can make it, you know, so depending on how high it is. I mean, if you go for anything less than 100%, it's going to look very odd in that it starts to position it not exactly where you want. Kind of it starts at the bottom. You want it in the middle. Go for a 100% like that. And also um, you can decide on the spacing. Um, between, sorry, where am I? Sorry, divider, sorry. Uh, yeah, we did the height, uh, the color we've done and um, the style. Sorry, I'm losing myself here. You can do it for a double, which doesn't really show much until you increase the weight like so. You can also go for a dotted or a dashed as well. Let's leave it as solid and let's just leave it as one. That is the dead, dead simple way of putting a line in between. Okay, dead simple. Obviously for your, for your items in here in the content, you will put in the relevant URL for where it's going to, right? So I'm going to type in home. It will then come up with home page. You put it in. That is now activated. Obviously, sort out your styling and your coloring. Okay, right. Let's now go on to the next one. Let me just undo that color bit there because I don't want that. I don't want to mess around with the color scheme on here. I want to keep it nice and simple. Okay, now the second way to do it is rather than having an icon list as a horizontal line. Okay, and I probably didn't say that, did I? This is where you set the horizontal line. So we have default, that's how your icon list will look. And then you're gonna hit inline to get it to be inline. So sorry, I skipped that bit there. Second way to do it is we have buttons. So each one of these is a button. You've dragged in a button, I've added in three buttons, okay? I've then gone to each of these buttons. I've gone to advanced. I've then gone to positioning and I've picked custom. You can go for inline, okay? I've just gone for custom and I've given all of those buttons 33%. So that means that when I've set my layout for how they're gonna sit, whether it's an inner section or a section or a column or whatever, they are all going to be like, uh, cause there's three items, 33%. Yeah, pretty simple there. I've also then gone to my column and I have ensured that the horizontal align is center. Look, if I do this space between, that probably doesn't really change much. If I do start, it's now slightly more to the left. If I was to go a space, it starts to mess around with it. This is actually a very small 
column actually, it's only 340 or 350 pixels in width. Just leave it as center. So I've gone in and set the custom positioning to be 33, 33%. I've then gone over to the middle one because I've only got one. I've got two outers and one middle. I've then gone to the style tab for that button, gone to border type, set the border type to be solid. I could have gone double or whatever, could have left it as none, and look, it's disappeared. We put it as solid, and I've then said one pixel on the right, one pixel width on the left, left, right, okay? And I've given it a color. I could have put red if I wanted to, okay? We'll just put it back as, a, we'll just put it back as one of these colors here. And what that then does is give me, if I just show you this again, again, we have a button, right, with links, to where you want it to go and we now have a divider okay and again you can be a bit creative with the divider in how you do that and you could even set it to be differently so i could say actually the right one will be five okay like so i mean that looks really really ridiculous right why would you do that but i'm just showing you here are the options you could go for okay again really really, really simple way of doing it obviously if you had five items you're going to go then like, obviously, what you would do is you would copy this and paste the styles. Look, let me just do it. I'm going to copy this and paste the style over here, right? It's going to look a bit awkward because I haven't messed around with the margins exactly correctly yet. But if you do it correctly, eventually you're just going to have, um, you'll do it, skip one, do it, skip one, do it, skip one, okay? And work it out that way. Do take account though, how's it going to look in the mobile view, okay? So what you don't want to do is do it and forget about your mobile. Double check how it's going to look and adjust accordingly. Right, the third way to do it. Again, we've got buttons exactly the same as what I did above. This, we still have buttons. We still have custom positioning. But now I've used a divider line. Okay, so what I have here, if I just go to this section, so the third section over here, okay, column one, let's just look at this here. We have a, uh, yeah, so I've added in a inner section here just because I wanted to keep it in the same section. We have five columns at the moment, okay? Column one has home, column three has about, column five has contact. Column two and four over here have a divider line. And if I click this divider line here, okay, it's just a divider I've dragged in, a simple widget. It is a solid divider. I've currently set it to be 39% in width. Why have I gone for 39%? Well, this is what happens at 100%. It's become a bigger line. So I'm just going to put this back to 39, okay? Because it looked better like that. The alignment is centered. So look, if I do left align, it goes to the top. And you go, well, hold on. Left goes to the top. That doesn't make sense. It will, trust me. And right goes to the bottom. Again, just stay with me on this, okay? You could also, if you want, change this to be text. So you could, if you want, take out the divider, the solid line, and actually put like a pipe symbol in. Or you could put an icon in. It's entirely up to you. Now, when we go to the style tab for this, okay, the gap for this is set at four and the weight is one. If I increase the width, the weight, well, you can see what's happening. It's increasing, let's put that back to one. If I increase the gap to be 40, can you see what's happening? It's pushing everything out. Now, in actual honesty, a divider line when you add it is automatically horizontal. And that's why when we said left, right, it would actually go to the left. But because what we've done here is rotate it, left makes it go to the top and right makes it go to the bottom. So just get your head around that. So dividers are always horizontal. So how did we get it vertical? Very, very easy CSS code. Look, so first thing you do in the advanced is I gave this a class name of vertical. I called it vertical. And I've done it for this divider and that divider. In the custom CSS, we then just have a simple bit of code, which is vertical, transform, rotate 90 degrees. So if I type in 45, 45 degrees, and look, it's done it for both of them because they've got the same name. So let's just put it back to 90. So again, another dead simple way of doing it. Of course, I'm now using five columns instead of one column with just custom positioning. So think about 
you know, your DOM, your rendering? Does it affect the speed of your page in any aspect at all? Double check all of that. But if you're not use, if you're only using this now and again, it can work for you. Okay. So again, really, really simple way of doing it. Then we have option four. This again is a button. This is now using custom positioning. So this was button columns, button five columns and a divider line. This is now button and custom positioning with the 33%, 33%. And then what I've added here, well, it's not actually 33%, is it? It's going to be um, whatever, I, I, I can't remember what I had now. Um, in fact, I'll just double check that. Advanced positioning. Yeah, sorry, this is inline. Let me just change that because we need to make, we get this right. See, this is what happens, people, when I get told do a video and I didn't think it through. This is inline positioning. And the reason I did inline, it was just easier to manage without me going, oh, 100 divided by 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You know, let me just keep it simple. So we have three buttons. And then I added in a divider. So this is just like the divider above. But this time, instead of using like the divider here, whether it's a solid, double, dotted, curled, curved, squared, wavy, zigzag, arrows, rhombus, trapeziums, trapeziums, no, parallelogram parallelogram. Wow, say that really quickly. Okay, you can, that's the one great thing about dividers, by the way, you can have, you can play around here. And I just want to go back over to this one here very quickly. If I go over here, go to content, I could have gone for curled like that. I could have curled dividers. You can be a bit creative in what you do. Anyway, back over here. So in this divider, I'm not bothering with a liner. I'm now using an icon. And I can pick whatever icon I want. In fact, let's go for the exclamation mark, right? Let's go for that one. Let me just hit insert, like so. Do, 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 do. There we go. We now have an exclamation mark, okay? If I go to style over here and I go to icon, because this is where it's relevant now, I can change the color of my icon. I can do what I want with it. I can even rotate it. You might not realize this. You might like an icon but it's not the right positioning. Well, I could do this now, like that. I could rotate, that's not even 90, is it? Okay, 90. I could rotate it and have, so there is a symbol in here, in fact, which is, um, I think if you go here, uh, there you go. I don't know what it's called, it's called window or something like that. So you could use the window symbol as well. So I'm gonna stick the window symbol in, right? Like so. And I'm now just gonna rotate it. Actually, don't use window. Aha, don't use window, use minus, because the window one is right at the bottom. Use the minus one, there we go. See that? Easy mistakes. There we go, we can use the window symbol, so it's a slightly thicker line. So you can be quite creative with what you do here. And the great thing is also, of course, is you can color it accordingly to what color you want to have. And you can rotate it and play around and get exactly the look that you're after. Okay, the Fifth and final way to do it, or what I'm showing you here, because I bet there's about a million other ways you could do it. We have buttons, custom positioning again. So this time 33, 33%. And now we're using the spacer. So if we go to this final section here, okay, like so. Come on, get open column, open column, open column, open column. There we go. In fact, you know what, this is not, um, custom position. This is inline as well. Again, I'm really sorry. Yeah, this is inline. Sorry. I'm really sorry, guys, because uh, and people, um, I, I should have thought about this before I started doing the video, but hey, kill me. Don't kill me. Love me. Love me loads. Right. So again, we have in, uh, inline positioning. So every time you add an item, it sticks it in the line. And if I now go over to this spacer, we drag in a spacer, right? I've made the spacer be three vh okay vertical height because if i start to use pixel it just creates a dot okay instead i've gone for vertical height three if i'd increase this to be 58 look what's happening and if you start messing around with that it's not going to give you the look you want i then went to the advanced tab okay here i have given it a padding of one on the right you can decide left or right it, it makes actually very little non difference but if i had set it to zero okay you're not actually gonna see anything there. And it's a strange one, but what you need to do is you just need to go in and I just picked right, I just give it a one. It just gives a bit of weight to, or padding to make it stand out. I then went down to the border, leave that as it is, uh, that was it, background. 
and I picked a background color. If you do not pick a background color, you're not going to see anything. Okay, so all I've got is a spacer. I've given it a background color, right? And I've said give it one pixel width on the right, and it now creates a line for me. So that is a peculiar way of doing it, but it is a snubber way of how you can add in a divider. I mean, I actually prefer this one just because of the creativity it can give you in terms of your divider and rotating it and just just what doing doing something with it but but I also like this one as well so both of these are great if I was ever going to do it and then we just wanted pipelines this would be my default way of doing it but I quite like these options as well so I look I hope this helps you um do dividers for buttons icons lists things like that so don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, and we'll see you soon.